Welcome to Voodoo Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of Enslaved Odyssey to the West. I played it on Steam. It's also available on the PS3, Xbox 360, and via backwards compatibility, you can play it on the Xbox One and Xbox Series series. So let's start with the story. You play as a character named Monkey. And when it starts out, you are trapped in this like prison pod and you witness another character escape, which her escape allows you to escape. And then the ship you guys are on crashes. She then attaches a headband to you that enslaves you and forces you to follow her commands. And basically if she dies, you die. And this all happens before he even learns her name, which is Trip. She is the other main character of this game. I should say this is a post-apocalyptic world, but the kind where like nature has begun to overgrow everything and take the world back essentially. But there are machines roaming the world and they're basically really dangerous animals. Trip and Monkey had been abducted by a group of slavers. They basically just go around and abduct people and nobody really knows why they do it. It is something obviously you discover throughout the game. But back to it, Trip put the headband on Monkey so that he can take her back to her home settlement because she knows she wouldn't be able to make the trip on her own. And I will say overall, I really like the story and I like the bond between Monkey and Trip. It starts out really rough, but you get to see it grow. And I will say, however, the one thing for me is the ending. I won't say it ruins the game, but it's definitely kind of a weird ending. Now let's get into the audio, and the voiceover work in this game is really, really good. I was really impressed by it. It's been a long time since I've played this game, and I gotta say, the voiceover work really does a great job. You get invested in the characters. As for the sound effects, I think the sound effects in the game are very good. I think it's really well done. I will say that, you know, it's a little limited just because it's not a brand new game, but it's good. As for the music, I love the music in this game. I was really impressed by it. It's actually a game where I went and bought the soundtrack because I loved the music so much. Now let's get into the gameplay mechanics and whatnot, and this is a third-person action game. With some, of course, RPG elements. And by RPG elements, in this game, when you beat enemies or you can just collect it around the world, you basically get XP that you can then, you know, enhance your health, your combat abilities, etc. So there is a lot of climbing to be done in this game, as well as there is a good amount of combat. And I think the combat does a good job because you can do certain things with the enemies, as well as using trip to your advantage. If an enemy can't really be killed in a normal sense, like monkey can mock them or what is it, taunt, that's the one. So that they'll charge him and run into items and then you'll be able to do like a takedown on them, like a final takedown. Or he has a staff that can also shoot, you know, basically lethal ones and then stunning blasts. And I will say, I didn't find the stunning blasts necessarily useful, but like the killing ones, yeah, those came in handy. Now, Trip can help because there are ranged enemies and Monkey isn't necessarily the best ranged guy. Sometimes they'll have shields, etc. So she can like lure them with a decoy, allowing you to sneak around and get behind those enemies. But she also becomes kind of a handicap when it comes to traversing things because she can't jump or climb the way Monkey can. So it's a good gameplay element and it adds to their characters as well. It definitely shows that Trip grew up in like a community, whereas Monkey grew up in the wilds and he knows how to do this stuff. But I will say I felt like the combat was not as fluid this time. I definitely, like maybe it's just because I played it so long ago, I remember it feeling more fluid, but since then, the combat hasn't aged amazingly. I won't say it's terrible, I think it works, and it works well enough for the game, it just doesn't feel as smooth as, you know, a lot of modern combat. But, I mean, that's not surprising, this is a fairly old game. Let's get into the controls, and I'm gonna say this, the controls work very well. For all of the climbing, for all of the moving, for all of the shooting, I think the controls work well, even for the combat. I mean, you press the buttons, your character will react, they will respond. Your character moves in the way you want him to move, the camera moves in the way you want it to move, so I don't have any complaints with the controls. Now let's get into the graphics, and that's where this game starts to fall down and really show its age. For the most part, I think the characters look pretty good. There are some animation issues, I think, at times. It's really weird, because like some of the animations are really good. Like for Monkey, they're really well done. But for some of them, they look a little weird for Trip. I think Trip and Monkey overall, they look pretty good. They still hold a certain degree of realism. But there are certain details that you would see now that, you know, they couldn't do 
on the 360, like, in that era. So it is unfortunate, and, like, it really shows in the world, I think. The world just, from a design standpoint, looks really good, but the detail just isn't there to make it look like a realistic world. I think that's the most disappointing part for me graphically, is that the world doesn't look as good as it could. Or as we have seen now, that's where the game really shows its age, and it's just kind of disappointing to see it now. But, for me, graphics aren't the biggest thing, so it is very much survivable, and I am very much able to look past it. But that doesn't change the part where it is a little disappointing looking at it now. I will say, however, I do like the enemy design. I think the robots look pretty damn cool. And from a design standpoint, I like the way things are meant to look. It's just, unfortunately... They don't live up to that hyper-realism. It's like I normally say, older hyper-realistic looking games, you know, that doesn't hold up. So let's wrap this up. I'm going to say I did find some faults in this game playing it now because it's an older game. And if I had a real score system, I probably wouldn't give it as high of a score now as I would have back when I first played it. But that doesn't mean that I didn't have a good time playing it again. That doesn't mean that I wouldn't recommend this game because I, I would. I would absolutely recommend this game. I mean, if you're one of those people who graphics are the end-all beat-all and... You know, if a game has shit graphics, you're not going to play it. You can't go back and play old games. Then you're not going to play this. But if you're in it for the story, if you're in it for the gameplay, then I think this game is fully worth playing. Okay, so in the comments down below, why don't you tell me, are you annoyed that Microsoft hasn't been doing a lot of backwards compatibility lately? There's still so many games that I want them to bring back. Or are you all in the camp of, hey, screw old games, let's keep going forward. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share and subscribe. Have a good one.